Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Do you remember Lord Peter Mandelson, the creepy oleaginous master manipulator and chief puppeteer of New Labour? The creepy man who would whisper in the ears and make things happen from behind the scenes. A man with far more power than people ever realised. And then he disappeared, went back, became one of the children of the night. Well, he's made a reappearance and again worm-tonguing his way into the ears of the rich and famous. He is now saying that the Tories, in particular Rishi, Rishi Sunak, are absolutely terrified of Nigel Farage. They say they don't know how to deal with him. They see him as a threat but can't fight the threat. They're sitting in number 10 with a bunker mentality, too afraid to challenge directly because they know so many people agree with what Nigel says. And indeed the Tory party themselves would love to do what Nigel says, but they've talked themselves so far to the left that they don't know how to do it. There needs to be a complete revision, a complete jump back to the right. But they are incapable. And Mandelson has seen it. Let's take a look at this to see what that uh, horrible, horrible man, that, that greasy man, is saying. But actually, I agree with him. It's weird, isn't it? Here goes. Now, it's actually a Sky News piece, but I picked it up on Yahoo News, so we've got to give credit where it is. But there we go. So, general election. Farage terrorising the Tories and Rishi Sunak is too afraid, says Lord Mandelson. Yeah, and I think he's actually, he's right. I think he is spot on. I think they don't know how to deal with him. Nigel Farage is terrorising the Conservative Party and Rishi Sunak is afraid to take him on. Labour grandee Lord Mandelson has told, told Sky News. The former cabinet minister and spin doctor who masterminded Tony Blair's 1997 landslide win, argued the job of Tory leader should be to stand up to Mr Farage and Reform UK rather than seeking to appease them. Well, the trouble is, he knows that an awful lot of Conservative, um, current sort of Conservative um, politicians are quite tempted to go and join Reform. And it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, and certainly a lot of the voters seem to be going that way as well. Um, this is what happens. This is why getting Sunak in was such a bad move as everybody told them. Every member, virtually every member of the Conservative Party, rank and file, the ones who had the vote, said no, we don't want him. Rejected him. They knew. But the uh, the MPs felt they knew better. And now they're finding out. And it's delicious, isn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, trying to outflank Mr Farage has only served to embolden the maverick politician and make him stronger. Should you strike him down, he shall return more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Uh, is, he appeared yesterday morning with Trevor Phillips. The decision of the former UKIP leader to contest a Tory held seat at the election and take the reins of Reform UK has exacerbated Mr Sunak's electoral woes, threatening to split the vote and the party. The party is riven. It's far too late for the Tories, I think. They have been caught short. And Mandelson has seen this. That shapeshifter, that darkling lord has seen it and he's calling it out for what it is and of course we've all seen it ever since the decision to um you know that that, that Rishi Sunak made that he's going to stab uh, Boris Johnson in the back he's going to sort of push this push this then he done that got rid of Boris he stood people rejected him didn't like it came in got rid of trust and now he's adopting all the trust's policies it's weird isn't it no wonder Mandelson's piped up one he's been keeping very quiet for such a long time now he can't help himself but as I say, he's right. Um, fresh polls gave an either, even black, either, I can't speak, even bleaker outlook for the Conservatives, with one indicating the party, of course, to pick up just 72 seats. There was one the other day, it came out with 35 to 39 seats, and that at all wouldn't surprise me. I think the Tories are in a lot more trouble than they believe that they are aware of, and I think a lot more trouble than even the most pessimistic viewpoint within the party. I think there's going to be tactical voting in England as well. I know I've been pushing it in Scotland, but I think in England there may well be. Uh, there's a lot of people who are just aren't going to be there. I mean, so many, a hundred and odd of jump ship and aren't even standing because they know they're going to get shafted. 
it's hardly worth putting all the effort into fight a seat that you're not going to win. So they haven't. So they've got all these nobodies, all these no nobody faces, no hopers standing there. You know, vote Tory. Who's this person? I don't know. Has he been vetted? No. Why? I haven't had enough time. You don't know what you're going to get. Uh, anyway, uh, Cabinet Minister Mark Harper has repeated his party's warning that a vote for Reform UK would give Labour a very large majority and a blank cheque in office. Well, he's going to say that anyway, isn't he? But the trouble is, even if people voted Tory, even if Reform people voted Tory, Labour are still going to have a big majority. Uh, as well as dist failing to distance himself from his predecessors, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, Mr Sunak had made the error in trying to uh, in vying to outflank Reform UK, argued Lord Mandelson. He said he's doing so by appeasing them, by sort of throwing red meat to Farage, which is not outflanking him. It's just making him bolder. It's just making him, frankly, stronger than Sunak. And we see it in the polls now. Reform are the second party of Britain. He said, therefore, the tactics, the strategy has been wrong, in my view. And Sunak, from Sunak, right from the beginning. He said, I think the reason he doesn't take on Farage is because he sees him as a stronger politician. And frankly, he's afraid to take him on. And he is. I think if you had, a, if you had Sunak and Farage in the same room on a head-to-head -head on the TV, I guarantee Farage would walk out of there the winner by a considerable margin. Uh, on Farage himself, Mandelson said, I think he terrifies the Conservative Party. I mean, he terrified David Cameron into conceding a referendum on our membership of the EU. And now he's doing the same to Sunak. He terrorises them. And he terrorises them because he has the strength of 10 because his heart is pure. He goes into battle with right and justice on his side. He knows what he says is the truth. They have to spin and lie and cover up. And you can never win like that. Because ultimately, the truth always wins. Uh, he added, Farage is an effective politician. There's no point in denying it. He has a clear message. And it's not one I happen to agree with in any respect at all. But I think that Farage is much better at, you know, talking people or taking people down and destroying things than he is in offering a constructive, clear alternative. But be that as he may, the job of the leader of the Conservative Party, he says, is to take that on and show an alternative to the right, not to appease it. He later clarified, I'm not saying he's literally a terrorist. I'm saying he's terrorising the Conservative Party. Yes, nobody's thinking that he's a, a literal one. They're just saying that he absolutely... He's put the fear of God into the Tories and he has got Rishi Sunak frit. And it is wonderful to see. And I personally cannot wait for July the 4th, our Independence Day. Coming up. It is going to be entertaining, whatever happens. And I do hope that Farage does win his seat. And I think he will. The polls are that he's got a good chance of actually winning the seat and finally becoming an MP. And when he's standing there at the dispatch box, uh, the dispatch box and telling it as it is, uttering the truth, calling them out for what they are, it's going to make for a very interesting politi political uh, term at Parliament, isn't it? Next five years are going to be hey, you know, spectacular, I think. Anyway, I'm going to round off there. This will be my last one in the studio today. I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to do a few just on uh, normal sort of uh, piece to camera sort of stuff rather than in the studio and full one because I'm getting tired now and it's much easier to sit down uh, with a little cup of tea, my feet up. I know, still not 100%, but at least I'm back in the office. And thank you very much, my good friends. You are all marvellous. Do hit the subscribe button. We are so close now to 17,000. I can almost smell it. Uh, and if we can get it today, that, of course, would be super. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Speak soon. Goodbye.